Hello and welcome back to Paris, France, where game four is about to begin. King Zone are at match point against Flash Wolves, two and one in the series. We expected this one to be close. We expected Barnes to burn, and it has indeed been that barn burner so far. I'm just smelling burning hay. And I think a lot of people are thinking that now King Zone are right there and the 3-1 is penciled in for a lot of people. When they've been able to execute these map pressure drafts, they've been very strong. But every time the team fights are threatened, that's why you take a step back. Yeah, execution is the key for me because there have been those mistakes that draw your eye and then they've snowballed out of control. Both teams have been good at punishing. Flash Wolves in game number two, after the stuff around Dragon, they were able to run that one all the way through. Then in this game, King Zone take complete control after that Baron. Yeah, it's been a consistent trend that the mid game has paved the way for the end game. First Blood is actually one and two so far. Flash Wolves gotten that every single time, but it's the, the 10 to 15, 20 minute mark where the major choices are made. That's when one team gets off of the 5,000 gold lead and never really lets up from there. We'll see if this mid the game can go a bit better for Flash Wolves or if it's gonna end here. And even though the blue side worked for King Zone in game number three, that was of course Flash Wolves choosing red. Now King Zone in game four, they will choose the red side. They don't want to deal those pesky counter picks, and they got away with the early Jace for, in game number three. Let's see what their plan is for game number four. Yeah, Flash Wolves still holding on to that rise pick as well, which uh, a lot of people are calling for them to drop in favor of some of those more flexible picks that King Zone can use on the red side. Zones of red side bands have been pretty consistent so far in this series. Mal Sahar was dropped when they were on the blue side, but that was the third band we were seeing pretty commonly from them. And maybe it's more jungle pinch here from the Kingstone side. Flash Rolls had first picked Rakan before, gave it away later on. Are they worried about Gorilla picking that champion again? No, it's still the Aurelia that is more important. This actually matches their game two bands exactly. And we'll see if Mal Sahar does indeed show up on the Kingstone side. We should then match that game two draft. A lot of timer here. Do they just roll back the mouse that we did not see prized in the previous game? Talia priority, I think, will be very high potentially for both teams in this game after BD's outstanding game in game number three. And the last Scarner. man here, of course, is the champion that was first picked in game number two, the Skarner. That's been the default for Mooch. Again, the full jungle focus here from King Zone. Definitely paid off last time around. See what Mujin's answer will be today, though. They actually have the option. Could first pick that Trundle. Sure, but instead they want the Vladimir partial flex, of course. Can see it go to the top lane, but Maple had such a good game on that champion as well. Their one win was in the back of his performance. And honestly, when you see Vladimir locked in against a team that's really struggled in the team fight, honestly, just from first pick, it very early tells me we will win eventually because Vladimir is such a good closer. If he gets an early game that is just allowed to farm and then can run in at the 5v5. So probably going to be a team fight draft behind it. They can even take the arm that's eluded them quite right. a few times in the first round if they want. That actually is what kind of shows up in my head as well as the Orin or the Sion could get banned away in that second phase. Are you worried about losing out in your team fight comp? Then you're gonna have to sacrifice either your jungle pick to another set of bands yeah. or not be able to grab something like the Kai'Sa, which has been so powerful. Let's see what the priority ends up being. Of course, the Ezreal locked in. No one is surprised at all. Four Ezreal games in a row, and there is that Trundle, the partial priority. Three bands had to take the Trundle away, try to make sure Peanut gets the better jungle matchup. And then the question is, is it a blocker pick? I know, Kobe, you were frustrated that there was actually a true tank chosen in game number three, and that tank was stuffed by the Trundle ultimate and pillar again and again, even though Hanabi largely had a decent game. Is this going to be once again the AD carry matchup? It stayed true the entire three games. I think you really want to get your hands. Whoa! Hi, Rakan. Yeah, you would expect the second pick to be coming right after there Freak. Go. There's the hover. And I don't think you jump off Kai'Sa to go for a later scaling champion without going for Rakan alongside it. Sometimes you can read into timers and see that this is a pretty late shift coming through on the side of the Fashions. Maybe they read that they need that extra initiation power from the support, expecting an Orn ban, expecting potentially further bans and the Talia that was so good from BDD in the last game. If you take it on this third pick on red side, you yep. can just ban the Yasuo, and there are other good matchups into Talia, but it's one that was already used against you recently. You want to take it out. 
And this also spells that they're not going to go for their support pick for a while. It gives Flash Wolves time to ban away more of the counter picks. The Morgana, one of the famous ones here as well, that Flash Wolves can kind of secure a strong two on two in that bottom lane, one that has served them well this, this match. Well, that's how you know we're getting a very nice drop drip to us. There's <laughs> counters everywhere. There's opportunity cost to locking one thing in and giving up another. The Yasuo, like we mentioned, is banned. And like you say, Morgana will be a very standard ban. However, it's Kingzone who, with range supports, have traditionally really flustered and misplayed. In the end, though, after the second bans come through, it's going to be King Zone to show first which one it's going to be. <laughs> they would want to hold on for the counter pick still for Khan. Camille would maybe be the second ban if you want to pair one with Jace for kind of blind pickable split pushers that can do a lot of work. Of course, your hands are tied. Do you try to get a better matchup against Prey and Gorilla, or do you try to remove some of the con options on that top side? Camille's going to be on the other side, actually worried about Flash Rolls, maybe taking that one early and not having a great answer to it that we did see the Jacks before. Big surprise that no Orin ban. Tom Kench would be the blind support, you would imagine if they were going to take one, but the Morgana, like you said, is also available. Yeah, definitely still a lot of options and not giving away the look of either of these teams quite yet. Is it going to be another? Oh, it's not the top lane. It's Tom Kench here. So not going to be able to have that Ezreal TK on that bottom side. All right, well, still a lot of options available. That Morgana, of course, is up despite maybe some of the faults of a Rain support for Gorilla, Alistair, Braum, still some options here. 10 seconds to go. You expect them to wait on Khan's pick. Five seconds to go. The hover is on to Morgana, hoping that Black Shield can deal with the hope for what Khan engages that is locked in. Yeah, and it's going to be long range here from King Zone on the bottom side. Throwing out the bindings, throwing out the mystic shots. You have to be very careful of the all ins from Rakan, even with the Black Shield. Going to have to be very on point with that timing. And while the Morgana fits. We've already said a couple of times about King Zone's uh, inability to really wield those range spots because range supports usually need more jungle attention. They can be turned on and killed very easily. And every team that researches King Zone says target bot lane, the range support makes it just more susceptible to that target. In addition to the laning phase, oh, I remember you. all last world hearing about Gorilla's frustrations when other members of the team have to be the main initiators. And Kingzone right now are looking at Khan to have to be the main initiator for their last pick there. Oh, looks like Mood is going to give himself the weak matchup. Trundle usually considered a counter pick into Olaf. You still do have some early priority, but your days are numbered on that champion. Yeah, it's definitely a nuanced matchup here. You have to take control and take the initiative as the Olaf team and look for the priority early. And to me, that initiative starts at level one. I see Olaf Braum comps, just three buff by the power of Braum level one. Remember that every game a team has been on blue side this series, they run straight into the enemy red side jungle and start taking away camps. Definitely want to do that with the Olaf to evade some of those level three 1v1s where honestly, it truly does look like Olaf is a bit exposed. Drafts are locked in. Vladimir into the top lane. Hanabi will have to make sure he can get his way into the fights. That Gallia mid we didn't talk about very much, but there is a lot of hard engage to follow up the Rakan, to follow up the Olaf, to get Maple into that side lane, to maybe match the roams of VDD, or be the first to get there. And we'll see the side lane pressure can work out. Or Flash Wolves, backs against the wall here. Yep, far more reliable initiation on the Flash Wolf side compared to King Zone. King Zone, though, they have the tools to get creative. To Leo Wall, they can create terrain with that as well as the Trundle Pillar, try and make it easier to land their crowd control abilities. And listen to that crowd. Paris is ready to see if Flash Wolves can make this upset win happen despite having the better record in the group stage. Almost everyone assumed King Zone were still going to be the better team once we got to the best of fives. The champions of Korea almost in perpetuity end up being the best team in the world. At least some Korean team is. Roar of the crowd here in Paris is all inspiring. They are so excited. They want the five games, I'm sure. Flash Wolves have definitely got plenty of cheers as this particular series has grown on. People love to see an underdog win. So excited to get into this one. Just looking at the loading screen on our screens, Khan is actually taking Comet in the top side to reinforce that laning matchup against the Vladimir. Gonna be an interesting one to watch for here. That show gap for him versus the Vlad. Hope he can sustain it and be a great frontline champion. We do again have a quick pause start of this game. We will get in before too terribly long. We will be told what the uh, cause is at some point here. 
but of course, just the pressure is on for these players. Flash Wolves must win two straight. They've put, once again, carry pressure onto Hanabi on the top side. Vladimir here for him. Sort of has rethinked the game. There's a thumbs up from him next to the ref. Might be ready to go very shortly. And Flash Wolves are putting a lot in Sword Art's hands. You know, the reliable guy over the years, hard initiation. He's the one with the Rakan. Rakan Gallio, a combination that's been feared since the champions were released. And this is going to be Flash Wolves' main initiation. I think the hovers were also super interesting to track because it was first Gallio Jarvan, and then we all know that's about getting in there. Then it was the uh, Zack, and we call that the Bouncy Castle comp, where so many knockups that can be chained on each other. They settle on the Olaf, which is pretty different to the two other things they were suggesting. Maybe that's just trusting in Sword Art, being the true engage. It's not a Camille. It is a bit more situational, but he's the only real conduit for that big ult. He's going to have the extended range of being paired with Zaya as well. So the playmaking ability is there. Will the execution be? Execution has been the name of the game. Getting to the right places, playing the fights properly, making the good rotations happen. And it's a big part of how King Zone won the prior games. A huge set of great plays in the mid-game, getting more than Flash Wolves ever got with those movements around the map. We have the Zaya Rakan doing now for Flash Wolves. Three games in a row, they've gotten first blood of the bot lane. Now on a combo that's supposed to win that lane. And again, this is a teleport Ezreal in the bottom lane, something we've seen a lot over this tournament. Extra map pressure here, being able to teleport back to lane after you purchase your tier, keep up the pressure of minions, keep up the bottom lane focus. Yet, it has been Mujin for Flash Wolves, constantly ganking the bottom lane and finding kills for them. Woohoo! He's been able to turn the tides. That could have been a really good combo. Of course, Khan could easily have learned Rupture and gone for a bit more there. Thankfully for Betty, he was able to walk far enough away. And as we look at what's happened with the invades, there have not been that much deep vision. There is one ward inside the red buff that Kingzone was able to put down. That was Gorilla's ward, but no such deep wards from Flash Wolves. So a advantage in vision from Kingzone's level one. With the Morgana, they feel strong enough to actually reinvade top side and keep fighting. Or anything here, they're actually going for a late invade onto this blue nice. buff. Taking away the control from an Olaf, so huge in this matchup, allowing Tina a lot more room to work with. King's Zone not, out, not quite out yet, though. There could be a smite for this one. It's going to go over to Peanut. It was a nice attempt there by Mujin as a Vlad came down. That does mean that one camp lead. And now this wolf, pretty healthy with a level lead. Peanut can push Mujin out of the jungle. He took the gamble and lost. He kind of reads that he started on the walls, but there's no way he could have killed all the walls and contested the blue. So take the big wolf and look at BDD. He's backing up his jungler. It's the full court press here from King's Zone. Yep, King's Zone turning the tides here onto Flash Wolf. Invading from both sides, all members of the team getting involved except for the bottom lane so far. And Mujin going to be a very late level two there. Be a pretty Pina. significant camp lead here oh, for yeah. Pina. Let's pick up the majority of level three, can get it with the Scuttle Crap, and then just the start of another camp with the comment that we commented on during the little pause there. There's even more laning reinforcement for Khan in an unfamiliar matchup. We haven't, he hasn't actually played against the Vladimir in the LCK on this show. Though. Pina walks the reward on his way to mid lane, hoping to find something to do, but just leaves a bit of XP, gets that third level, and walks back down to the bottom side now, and there is now nothing left for Mujin to take, it looks like. Only 10 CS. What a rough start to the game. Completely starving this Olaf, and this is a huge, huge advantage here for King Zone. There's not a lot of options you know, left for Mujin to get get back out and actually have his presence be felt. It's so early in the game that even though you go back and you purchase boots, you can't use your Predator yet. So he's just going to be looking for scraps. Your Predator is to walk back to the base faster to get into his jungle. He's now looking for something to do as the Raptors are still up. So level two hoping to find an intelligent out pathing on the opposition. These Raptors are up, but says, you know what? I think the red is up too. Sadly doesn't land the damage, so it doesn't leash to him and actually loses a few seconds with that. And Peanut level four versus two is on the way over. Will Peanut check it or will he just go for the full clear? Seems like he will check. Oh, Mujin could be running out of time. There is no smite for Peanut though, so it's a pretty easy secure on his side. 800 health, but he doesn't Ooh. know there is no smite. Can Mujin actually go for this? A dot gonna happen and will lose out on the attempt to counter jungle. It's because Maple was in base for that invade. BDD had control of mid, he was back first. And even though Maple channels the teleport, Mujin has to see control. 
Still a level two Olaf. Level two level difference here for Peanut. This is a stomping in jungle experience. Usually the sword is about information. Now it's just him watching sadly. Lose that out on further camps. Will be a full clear and then some for Peanut on the top side. Struggle Street for Mujin, who's just now got to level three. Even Khan's able to push it in the lane. We talked about that at the very beginning of the siege, or this stage, I should say, of this match. If Khan gets the push, they tend to win a lot more at MSI. Right now, he's got pressure. You know, Spina can do a lot more than jungle as well. Level five to level three, a just shellacking in this jungle matchup as the Wolves finally respawn for Mujin to get something. And the turn battle ward actually came through from Peanut. Peanut was the one who spent his time in the face of the enemy jungle. He knows the respawn timer. Hello, oh. Mujin, says Peanut. Two levels up. These are my Wolves. All right, is the Undertow going to be able to snag something away? They have a collapse in the moment. He's coming down level five for both mid laners. Maple turns right back around, says, I can't fight for this anymore. Maybe the Big Wolf does come through. That is at least something, a little consolation prize, but he's now gotten one total wolf camp this game. Nice pillar, can buy some time, looking for the knockback, and a little bit more as Maple is going to be shoved back in. Healthy enough, though, as Mujin also gets to grab his brown. Actually, one of the few games where you want to reveal yourself in the mid lane has been up quite a few times. He did it earlier when he went straight through the mid lane to get the uh, Scuttle Crab on bot side. And the reason for that is they don't have any wards bot side. Whenever there's camps up, you have to be so afraid as Mujin of an invade. So just saying, hey, I'm bottom side, what are you going to do? It's going to cause multi pronged defense play that might get extra CS and invades for the side of Kingston. Going to the top side, Mujin gets the first slow. Now, can he outplay Rupture? Can he outplay a silence? Of course, that was already used to go after the Vladimir TP. He's actually just gone, able to walk away. Mujin out of mana, cannot chain axes anymore. And Khan is just fine, relieving the pressure on the top side. Yeah, he gets a couple of autos off, but that's about it. All he can do now is go back and get his Krugs. There's already been pings down on the Raptors, trying to keep the timer there for Pina and King Zone. Nice little play there by Betty. Managed to grab all those caster minions here. and. Makes it plus three in this bottom lane. The Harden Gate certainly has not happened. The first TP, of course, we saw from right earlier stacking that tier. Now, BDD being six is very important here. As we said before previously, BDD and Peanut work so well together to control with early leads like this. He can join jungle invades that Peanut starts off with the Weaver's Wall and make a huge difference. Well, Galio is also able to respond to skirmishes with the targeted ability. The terrain can change very quickly. The flashes are still up on the side of King Zone. So when you're behind, it's so much harder to get value out of the hero's entrance compared to when you're ahead. Coming down on a level four, Olaf still going to be a little bit scared. Here we go, though. The Raptors have respawned. Peanut's got the timer. Going to start him up here, and Maple's going to try and steal him away. It looks like, and only secures a single one. Good burst out of Peanut. Mujin comes by this time close enough on level six versus five here is able to grab at least something I had to take the blue buff just to really catch up an experience that means maple without blue buff is it gonna meet at here? first or not sort of there they see peanut but they've got back fills as three people are right there gorilla showing up on top of that one black shooters on peanut safe as it times out though will there be much of an engage prey winning the wings big old comes across oh. and gets revenge for the first three games here comes weaver's wall Mujin flashes grabs the blast cone gets out but king zone finally firing up first he was going for a red buff got a bonus <laughs> oh. kill instead as it was sword art tanking up the damage there he goes down bonus for king zone sword art dies for his jungler's red he says Mujin, i hope you enjoy that one because i died for this First bird bonus is down, but here we go in mid. Big CC on a BDD. Pretty low health for gets the pullback. Now Maple out of mana, surrounded as Peanut shows up. Black Shield here, he doesn't have any threat at all, and goes for the flash and ulti to get away. And now you're using your first hero's entrance defensively when you already are losing in the jungle tempo matchup. Flash Wolves have been on the run since before minions even spawned. Level one, King Zone took control, and they have put their stamp all over this game. Game is starting to run away from Flash Wolves King Zone. A full court press in this one. Shoves in all three lanes, farm leads in all of them as well. Not just the jungle, it's everyone. That is quintessential LCK King Zone. Everyone's got a farm lead. Peanuts in their jungle, nothing happens. And of course, if we're casting an LCK game, you say definitely a King Zone victory from here, but they've lost a similar game against MLXG and RNGs. Watch here. Oh. Just about overkilled him. It would have been very close, actually. Damage takes it down. Of course, top lane. 
now in that top side, but Khan once again able to flash away, only brings the one summoner, survives the Vladimir's ultimate. But there is that counterpoint of MLXG lane ganking his lease in, turning around a team, and Kingzone, when they're actually forcing fights, their execution has been off, so can they get there here? Such huge CS leads across the map here for Kingzone, though. It means there's so much control. It's really difficult here for Mujin to carve something out. BDD is now going bottom. And they found a bind, but no damage to follow up there. This time around, they get away from Shot Barrage. The Gorilla actually holding this wave, making sure that Prey can walk down and grab that one, not losing any to the turret. Nicely done by Gorilla here. This is what King Zone are used to. Control of the entire map. Jungle matchup constantly invading. Lanes all ahead and looking to have a very easy road towards the mid game. Every player making tool on the side of Vashel has already been used defensively this game. We saw Predator Pop just get back out on the map. We saw the ultimate on the Galio used purely defensively. Player making has been absent, but still, with Morgana in base spray, giving up a bit of control around bot side, they got plenty of control to surrender and still be ahead. BG waiting on top of the control where it is. There gonna be that bot lane dive, anything happening? Right now, no one is able to walk back to his side of the map. Holding on to the mid lane wave. Maple does not have an ultimate, but is walking down, but he's gonna be going through a ward to do so. I think he's not gonna find much for himself. Gets uh, 25 gold, 30. And Olaf says, the jungle's not working out. I got a relic shield, I need the help, guys. Let me go for this uh, cannon minion gank. I need the gold. Yep, the old cannon minion gank. <laughs> Definitely one of the least reliable fallbacks. Here we go, though. Going to hand off the blue buff to BDD. Times out the red, and then one more Q. There we go, picks it up. Yeah, just to make sure the damage over time from the red buff doesn't take it. There's no excuses there. Wouldn't be the first time Peanut secured a major objective with the damage over time effect, so he knows. It's going to be OK here. Still, 1,400 gold lead king zone. Poised to close this one out and get their date with World Never Give Up tomorrow. It's usually the part of the game where the early invades mean a little bit less. You're not actually able to hold up that timing of every camp as you were earlier in the game. Seeing Peanut walk down to the bot side, going for a map wide invade here. Weaver's wall back up. Yeah, it feels like so much wind has been taken out of the sails of this Flash Wolves team that has accomplished so much already at the tournament. Really impressing people who, who underestimated that. First time we're going to see Prey go for Icebone Gaunt at this tournament. He's on record as being a heavy preference to Trinity Force when you go for the double tier. And it's all for this pressure. It's all for pushing and lane control. They have plenty of that. Here comes the next move as more of the team is coming down to the bottom side, looking at maybe a first turret. Mujin actually was spotted by a sweeper. Almost catches Betty out with the pillar and divine. That's the ult actually as Feathers Fly to get away from a possible further crocodile from BDD. This turret now down to about one quarter HP. He's unable to walk away cleanly, and they've forced an ultimate out with this siege. All right, well, we have the possibilities of teleports. Everybody converging on the bottom side, but Kingzone don't want to throw anything away. Just gets over the line, but still pushed back in. Very durable, though, is Maple, not a problem for him. And off screen the entire time in the top lane, Khan with the Comet. Things going into this Trogath lane that's always been there as a Vladimir counter and doing well. And we have the updated stats here to show you how Khan has done this time. We talked about the forward percentage and the loss is still not fantastic. When he's doing well, you can visualize on the map that he's pushing into Vladimir. That's happened this game. Sort of has to jump the wall, almost gets bound. Nice juke to the side. Gorilla maybe could aim that one a bit better, but gonna be able to walk away with that one. Not a problem there. Khan, of course, with that farm that we saw. When he's got the farm that they tend to win, he's up 20 here. Yeah, meanwhile, though, the bottom lane has been the focus here for King Zone. They're able to push it in. This is going to be the first turret bonus gold. And as we said earlier, in this series especially, so much of it has been with the teams being able to move off of that early game pressure. These constant bottom side invades have really taken their toll on Flash Wolves. And taking a toll on Maple, who once again finds himself on a facilitator, went for the Galio to try to match the, match the Talia. There's been three blue buffs, none of them have gone to him. The last one chomped away with the feast by the Cho'Gath. Makes him so much more accountable. Of course, mana costs and cooldown reduction. But so many times on the Galio over patches. With all the map pressure, they take a very easy Drake, and it's been one-way traffic for Kingzone. Yeah, you gotta say, that is a very leisurely dragon take right there, allowing Ezreal just to get last autos, leaving it at 80 HP. Jungler recalling, 
in the river. That's just how much control they have over the bottom side. Flash well, is able to get something back for their pressure top set as they recall Betty and Sorta and put them into that top lane. They grab the rim throw. They actually deny a mini wave on that top lane turret as well. So some things moving forward on the Flash Wolf side, but there is a big pit to dig themselves out of. The gold lead is 2,000. A lot of darkness as well to actually get forward vision to use this Rift Herald appropriately. Trying to set the table though for Flash Wolves. They still have to be looking what can they do to create positive turn in this game. They have Shirelia's done for Vladimir. Teleport and Flash are available. Galio Ultimate, as you said, is a huge zoning ultimate that they can possibly use to try and set up this team fight. So Kingzone needs to make sure that they don't get flanked by that Vladimir to disallow that kind of comeback here from Flash Wolves. Ooh, that was near the attack sword right there, but not a lot of follow-through damage anyway. As he's 2 2s match up yet again, a 14 farm lead for Prey. Iceborne Gauntlet done as well, so very much a power spike in the favor of King Zone's dual lane. See if that gets played around, if they can knock down top lane turret with it. You can see BDD walking up towards that a little bit. Peanut the same. King Zone have been the ones calling all the shots so far in this sword out force to run away from Gorilla, who just claims a pretty easy control ward kill. This Double item spike here for Ezreal, for Prey, to support so much power. Uh, across from him is just the BF sword from Betty, all that they really have to work with. So Flash was trying to scrape together some more cash to actually fund themselves some better weapons before they actually take any sort of a fight. And it seems like it's very good for Kingzone to stay split up like this, dealing with Galio, Vladimir team fight power, something that is very scary. It seems like with Kingzone, they're able to play around just the lanes, continue the split push on all sides of the map, and Maple has yet to make an aggressive ultimate to find some kind of uneven fight. Adam, have been free farming the entire time. That's really the only thing you can say has been going well. Flash was no deaths in front of his lane. And again, the Black Shield is in time. Prey does not cut out, still has the Flash as well, despite the fact that Betty and Sword Art burnt summons, but now the dive to the back line is here. Hemo Plague is in, but the damage not gonna get any kills just yet. Here comes Galio, but it's not in time as Sword Art has fallen. A big four man taunt! Can he knock down Prey? Oh, oh and with Vladimir, they get two! Khan has arrived though. Three versus four in numbers advantage to Flash Wolves. As they kite back, will there be a battle they can win? Either way, it is a two for one. Flash Wolves finally get something on the board. That flank from Vladimir we talk about. He teleports in above of King Zone as they're pushing on the turret, about to blow the game wide open and open up the map, but they get two kills for one here and hold them off for now. It looked like all the threat was over, but huge move coming in with the talk from Maple does kill both Prey and Gorilla by right the tail end, so they do trade up in kills. Rift will have to be summoned soon. He's been holding onto it for a long time here. Moochin, that's the first proactive move that Flash has been able to pull off. A lot was used in that fight though. Flashes from both the Galio and the Vladimir, as well as Olaf offensively to get those kills. A two for one and a full reset does mean this top lane turret lives a lot longer than King Zone originally intended. May take a lot of time to return to that advantage. Grand Gorilla now in the mid lane, trying to slow down the game as Flash works. Attempt to steal the blue buff, not gonna happen. Good job by BDD, kites it away from the camp. You can see how those turret is going though. Khan will not be stopped. The second turret of the game goes to Kingzone, and once again, Flash Wolves have answered nothing, only kills. Sword Art waiting on the last few seconds of his ultimate cooldown in the brush here on top side. They may be looking for something with this Rift Held spawn. He walks in, Herald's there as well. A quick find, that won't be in time though. The charge is gonna come in. A nice chunk out of that turret, but it will be answered out. Cool. That becomes a very dangerous position. Pinch could be massive here. Predator popped in, sort of got onto the back line. Look for Peanut, but now Hanabi has to get away. Cannot do so. Rupture's gonna land Khan. Solo kills the top side. Flash is now forced to run in the 4v4. Not the vibe of the Weaver's Wall in. However, there are escape tools available. They can walk out. But look at this mid lane. No one's gonna stop the wave. Prey is here to land some auto attacks, and this should be Maybe three to one in turrets, not just yet. King Zone keeping up the pressure here. Solo kill for Khan in the top side of the map. No flash left on Hanabi from trying to use it in that last team fight. And Khan is able to take advantage. Definitely wasn't the matchup we expected the solo kill. I'm just on the back of a chase game. But this time the Cho'Gath and natural tendencies against Vladimir. Expertly used by Khan. 
Don't fast trade to try and take this third out of Tarp. That'd be a three to zero lead for this Flash Rules team that our major compliment of was the fact that from ahead, they've looked so deadly. Again, Khan here with Flash advantage in the 1v1. Able to zone him forward there, and then get his autos off for the slow. Flashes in for the beast combo. And there's no way you can dodge that. Yeah, definitely outplayed in that one-on-one. -on -one. Well done to Khan. Doesn't need Chase to win that battle. King Zone getting farther ahead now. 2.8 thousand gold. He gets knocked on that mid outer turret, but it's close. This Ocean Drake in 10 seconds, they could take almost anything they want. Two stacks of minion dematerializer left for the Vladimir, but then the Banner of Command is really going to start doing some work as well. Both Galio and Vladimir have no answer for that particular minion. It's another way for King Zone to play the map, which has been the way that they've actually won this series. And it was minions. That's it, though. Okay, they're backing off. Bringing everyone again to the mid lane. Wow, this is a teleport Ezreal. So Prey pushing on bottom in an unlikely 1-3-1. A little bit of a rotation there. BDD threatening the Weaver's wall from Dalia to try and collapse on the duo top. You can see how confident Khan was in the 1v2. As you mentioned, yes, the team able to move around, but not taking any damage, freely clearing the minions under his turret. Ray's got it all the way up to the turret. Now teleporting mid for that objective. But can he get the first damage? Decent damage. He's still going to be able to get away with Black Shield on. He's not going to have a problem there. Of course, channeling Hemoplague before the ultimate meant some of the damage was not amplified. Nice attempt by Hanabi. Can't expect the AD carries to be as good at the on-point teleports. It's the other lane. It's a new thing for them, but to get out, all things considered. So that is three turrets down for Kingston. The outer ring completely cracked. Still waiting to see, can they pull off the god combo of the Rakan initiation into the Galio. They need that proactive play. With so little map control, actually pulling off in a measured way is so difficult. It really is difficult because there are so many things that have to come together for Flash Wolves for them to find success in that team fight. Hanabi also has to get through this King Zone vision, trying to find himself a flank in addition uh, to the Rakan initiation coming off cleanly and Maple being in range for that hero's entrance. Right now, though, King Zone playing nicely defensive around mid lane, waiting for those minions to push up. This is a, an Ocean Drake that's on the field. Yeah. It hasn't really drawn much attention. And this starts to look more and more like the King Zone we may have expected coming into MSI 2018, where Peanut had a 17 camp lead over his opponent, took away everything. The lane's pushing on all sides. And Prey on his trademark, Ezra, his most played of the year. Just, it's been most damage in the game every single time up to this one. King Zone looking to be a little bit more back on form here. Sword Art continually looking for openings by sitting in brush and waiting for someone to be out of position. They were pinging on uh, BDD in the top side too, saying they could try and jump the gun there, but not gonna have a good opportunity present itself, so he pulls off once again. If you don't have any control wards, be a control ward yourself. And sit in a brush is all that Sword Art can really do in this particular scenario. The Baron's set up for King Zone's gonna be a little bit tricky. The Strogath wants to be in a side lane, and you really only have squishies and, you know, a semi-tank trundle in order to both face check and start the Baron. The Baron turns here if Khan isn't the one tanking the Baron. A little bit trickier for King Zone, and also pumping up for the Galio is a bad idea as well. Can be. So maybe that one stays off the table for a while, but Kingston have just played this one correctly again. They've only found themselves into one bad fight and gave away nothing for it. Ocean Drake picked up cleanly. And again, it's kind of Flash Wolves waiting for a, a mistake here from Kingstone. If we toggle the vision to look at the map from Flash Wolves' point of view, it is extremely dark. Not much vision, you know, past the mid lane here. Only a couple of straggling wards. And that's all with their outer ring of turrets also gone really begins to kind of put that chokehold down. And of course, the symptom of the early game where Olaf could never invade was so far behind that vision in front of the river was a luxury that Flash Wolves did not have access to. That's the smothering we always refer to when the early game goes away against the Olaf. And this is not what Flash Wolves have been used to at this tournament. They have been one of the best early games that we have had. So really good job there by Kingstone stuffing it. Now they're going mid and close to hitting that binding with the assist of a pillar. And Fed actually choosing to use summon or heal over his ultimate in case of maybe needing to dodge a binding or something else. But I don't know, that felt a little trigger happy. Sword Art was not in danger for that one either. There's no summoner down for a, what could be an impending team fight again. We've just been talking about King Zone having the much more controlled mid game, not giving Flash Rolls that option to find the combos the ultimate's in. There have not been those team fights almost at all. Now the siege towards Midweaver's wall to stop them. Now here comes the attempt. Can this be the fight? Flash will need.
the knockup onto one. Maple looks for the taunt, won't find it. The chop on the side. God just shuts him down. Are there going to be any answers? Maple gets lower and lower. No, a double kill for the Shogun. There is simply no openings. King Zone take everything. And with that, King Zone are going to move up to the Baron buff here and take this one. The only hope left is Mujin on the Olaf, making a hero's play to sacrifice himself. At least this time, there is no Shogun. These two secure, but even then, it might be biting off more than he can chew. Running for it! Mujin has the ult, he has the flash, he's got two doesn't help on the Baron, the re-engage towards him, he's out of range now, and he has no chance of stealing Sword Art, could be the next one to fall, jumps over the wall, doesn't matter, secured again by the Trundle, King Zone take even more. And with that, King Zone have paved their way to the finals <laughs> here at MSI. Gorilla gonna play a little game of hide and seek with Sword Art first though. For all the exit kills they can get, here comes Spray, walks up, does a lot of damage. Oh, uh, Peanut's here for the pillar, though. Fun no W has E and gets back out. Sardak gets some kind of silver lining, but we might not have silver scrapes here. King Zone just too far ahead. King Zone Dragon X, that was the sort of play we were alluding to. What does it look like when this engage combo plays from behind? Sadly, everything disengaged. The hero's entrance only hits Peanut as a black shield was used onto Gorilla. We're gonna get the big replay here. This is usually the triumphant Galio coming in and forcing a fight and really deciding it. But even though this is the best Wombo they can muster, look at the knockups when they come through. It's only on speed. Yeah, they're not able to get the priority targets. Meanwhile, Khan has sights on Betty and immediately flashes in for the Beast combo. Silence into Beast. You don't get the counterplay of that. Betty's survivability was on spells. Couldn't press R, couldn't plus flash. They knew that Cho'Gath was there, of course, because he'd just been poking around beforehand, but the Khan saw an initiation. They didn't have all the pieces, all the dominoes we talked about so many times the series line up, and from behind, they didn't have the luxury to actually win that one. Ray and Gorilla came here to win a championship, an international championship, something that has eluded them, but they have a very fearsome opponent waiting for them. King Zone wanting to, en wanting to enter that arena in a strong manner here. Finishing out this game pretty one-sided. Yeah. King Zone can stay on form. Will this be the MSI title they had hoped for? We'll, of course, figure that one out tomorrow, provided they win this one. The siege continues. These minions not taking damage, so dunk, dunk, dunk. The cannon still shoving down, and the top lane push happening as well. King Zone suddenly almost 10,000 gold ahead, looking to kill off Khan. That's unlikely. Walks into the 1v2 and says, don't even try it, as mid lane now under fire as well. King Zone poised to close it out. Still a minute left on Baron. Betty is low. Welcome down. No engage to be had. Out they go. A knock up into the air. Only really powers of five here for Flash Wars, but they're being spread across the map, as King Zone have done in all their victories today. Bot lane inhibitor goes down as the Banner of Command minion, the Bannon in this case, pushes forward. Almost 12,000 gold ahead here for King Zone, taking down inhibitors as we speak. King Zone, maybe the most King Zone game they've played this tournament. Winning every lane. They only need six kills. They've taken all the objectives. That's what matters. Nine to zero in turrets. The second time this series, they have kept a single structure from falling to Flash Wolves. All they've given up is two kills. They are two kills shy of a perfect game heading toward the final here. It would require a miracle for Flash Wolves to win this. With that reality freak, your eyes do look forward to a potential final between RNG and King Zone. Interestingly, we have the ultra late game team fighting team against the team that's looked so strong with their early game rotations, the King Zone, that is a bit of a reintroduction of what we saw in Korea. I guess the one thing between the two teams that might push in RNG's favor is that they were never really forced to show a second thing when they were facing off against their opposition yesterday in Fnatic. They were never truly forced to move off, will outscale and team fight you. Whereas King Zone, when they've tried to play that style, they haven't been convincing this tournament. Definitely true. Flash Wolves themselves, a team that can be very proud of exposing a lot of those weaknesses in King Zone that RNG are gonna wanna try and take advantage of later. But we still have the finishing to be done, my fans. Yep. Two inhibitor stand, King Zone, 7,000 gold power plays definitely going to help them get there. 
but they're gonna have to still walk inside the base. Sort of go for an for one big play, and not gonna happen. Frey E flashes out. He's gonna stay alive. And now Sordar and the rest of the team might just have to run. A nice wall. And this poor Galio now on the wrong side of the map. Nice route almost comes in. Now Peanut's in the front line. Here comes the team right. This could be the death knell for Flash Wolves. Forward they go, looking for the chop to silence and the kill. Through for Con 4 and 0. Vladimir trying to make the play on BDD, but he gets the cleanse. He gets the black shield. He stays alive on a double for the Cho'Gath. And Flash Wolves rapidly running out of options. Teleports to the bottom lane, King Zone to send them home today, to send them home three to one. Onto the turrets they go, only three left alive. Flash Wolves will still be denied the international finals. They've tried so many times, but the group stage will be the best performance they ever brought out. Maple finds a single kill, looks for the second on the Gorilla, cannot quite get the damage. The turrets are falling. King Zone still have their team alive, but there's maybe just enough defense of the minions fall. And they have to go back and settle for the inhibitor. Frey being forced away. The game will not end in this breath, Freak. It was so close, but the Reigns AD carry being taken down means one more attack is required. Although, maybe we're forcing now. It's time for the big play. Maple has to step up and carry with this fight, but the disconnect, the disengage, the movement away. King Zone make it cleanly. There is no re-engage. The Drake just going to be a freebie. Flash will still fighting here, still looking for any opening to get back into this game. But King Zone will retreat and reset. He thought maybe that TP would be the chance. Maybe one of those Galio flips would be the chance. But every single time, King Zone expertly play around those replays. This one brought to you by Acer Predator. Yeah, we're watching the replay here of how this all went down. This Trundle Pillar in fantastic spot. Two fights in a row. Hello, I'm Trogath. Nice yep. to meet you, Zai. You're dead. Solo kill in that side of the fight there. And from there, unfortunately, there's nothing left for Flash Wolves to build around. Yeah, Maple was trying to join that fight, but left up on the top side there on the Galio, never enabled to get in. And now it's all over for, for the rest of these minions. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost certainly going to be that King Zone win, of course. Hanabi is up to death cap now. That slight miracle chance of the perfect combo ultimates can always be a possibility despite the gold lead. It's just the one in a million here. Yeah, honestly, if you look back to at what Flash Wolves have completed during this tournament, I mean, they came in with such low expectations from so many analysts uh, after the performance at Worlds, but two new rookies come onto the stage, absolutely explode, kind of define the way that the, the meta in the group stage is played. And here, pushes King Zone very well for the beginning of the series on top of it. Definitely increasing expectations for Flash Wolves, regardless of how domestic form is viewed. Always a difficult lens with the LMS and some of the misgivings we have about raiding teams there. King Zone walking forward here. Again, plenty of Flash Wolves, plenty for Flash Wolves to be proud of. They certainly do not come away as the fifth, sixth place team that a lot of people were looking at when they were trying to do power rankings pre-tournament. Team that went one and five at Worlds and then lost part of their roster. You imagine this was going to be a weak team, but no, Flash Wolves, I thought, definitely had a pretty good run in this tournament. Sadly, looks like it's not going to be enough to knock down the Korean champions in the best of five, though. I mean, Flash Wolves still have teeth. Yeah, they're down 11,000 gold, but you can see how King Zone are respecting the possibility of one of those explosive combos. Vladimir's walking up from the river looking for maybe what could be the last team fight of the series. Weaver's Wall comes down, BDD hoping to cut them off as they rush towards this Baron. And with the Cho'Gath, this is an easy secure. All right, started off. Flash Wolves are out on the map, so they're going to have to commit to this if they release go and lose their base. In chomp range, grabbed at 8.30. No one was in range in time. A great call by King Zone, get it closed. All right, well, the Baron buff, King Zone can just switch over to the top side. And again, completely destroy Flash Wolves, pushing here through one last minion wave, inhibitors in their sights. Not trying to risk anything our King Zone. The Baron was the safest place to go. That is where they go. Watch as they try to make sure that Hanabi doesn't get in there. As we already mentioned, the death gap has been completed for a while. Watching their flanks, watching their flanks, they want this inhibitor. This is the battle that will make or break Flash Wolves tournament. Gigantic gold lead, Baron buff on all five. Rupture not quite going to land, that's one cooldown, but Prey, just a lot of time to hit this inhibitor. That one's going to fall, middle already gone. Bot lane alive though, one Nexus turret missing as well, waiting for the engage, not gonna find it yet, they're just sieging. 
pushing their opponents away. Anabi wants to get back in and change his teleport to Ghost so he can actually close the distance. Hasn't been able to actually go into the base yet. And the job for Sword Art is so difficult. He's looking for a priority engage, but the Black Shield is going to have to be baited out. Only on the Convidention is down. They've got to kite back away. Where's the Galio? Where's the dive in the backside? They force the Zonia's out of BDD. Gets away with the cleanse and the flash. Praise still alive as well. And a silence. Vladimir oh! needs to re engage, but Hanabi gets it. Traded out by Khan. 4v4 minions inside the base. The turrets are already dead. He's not arranged for the redemption. The re engage not going to happen. Two or more close teamed up for King Zone. 4v2 now in this fight. And Betty has nowhere to go. Gets the root. Gets one. Looks for the second. Not gonna happen, Peanut gets the kill, and now Mujin against the world. His own country now to talk him down, to push him back onto the fountain, and the minions are here. The Nexus is alone in King Zone, and the return to form will take the 3-1 victory over Flash Wolves. Well, not quite yet, buddy. Mujin distracts them, and now they'll turn their sights back to the Nexus. With a real King Zone Dragonette, please stand up, was the call from so many people as the tournament went on. When would it be? When would it be? We certainly saw glimmers of the team that dominated in Korea, but also still some of the things you can target with King Zone. It feels like if you were an analyst and had to prepare a one-pager on RNG and King Zone, the King Zone one will be fully featured, the RNG one. Outside those early losses, there's still things we don't know because they haven't been pushed in the same way. Flash Wolves proving that the real King Zone does have flaws. Not the team that completely dominated LCK. They have had their struggles throughout this tournament. They have grown and they have overcome them. Lots of cheers for Peanut. I remember this from Worlds not long ago where he kind of made his name for himself, had been a pro for just under a year, and well, everyone really, or sorry, just over a year, I misspeak, but had really stepped up in Chicago and, and looked amazing against one of the world's greatest junglers. And this time around, a great cheer for Flash Wolves as well. I agree. It feels bittersweet to lose in the semifinals, but it felt like a bit of a, a re-breakout tournament for Flash Wolves, a team that had had such struggles the last year or so, and again, lost part of the roster and had a good look this year at MSI. Hanabi pulling out his Yasuo, having carry performances. Carry wins against Khan, yeah. you know, the number one carry top laner uh, ranked across the world. Meanwhile, Mujin as well in the jungle, creating so much for this team, showing no fear at any point. And Khan definitely came up clutch today. He definitely improved his performance compared to a lackluster group stage. But I can't help be, spy, be struck by the fact that RNG was sitting backstage. Of course, they won yesterday. They got that extra time to prep for the final. I don't think they're surprised by anything that Kingzone did this series. Maybe the Aurelia will take them a little bit off guard. But I think that their prep is going to be pretty clear, whereas Kingzone need to scramble and play tomorrow. Yep. Who's going to get that international championship? Will it be Prey and Gorilla, who have sought it for so long? Or will it be Uzi? The bottom lane definitely wants it. Yeah, I mean, it's so rare that, that China does get to make that run. Edward Gaming, the famous example at this very tournament back in 2015. Of course, back then it was Edward Gaming and SK Telecom T1. This year, Royal never give up, taking their, their shot against King Zone Dragon X. Uh, and pre-tournament expectations were King Zone far and away, best team in the world. They crushed Korea, the most competitive region. There's not a chance. In group stage, that was flipped. Royal looked the better team. And now looking at the semifinals performance, I think it's a much closer look here. And, and just like we had the desk split in predictions in today's semifinal, I expect split predictions for tomorrow's final as well. And I think a lot of people will favor RNG because they've gotten over challenges in the early game, got to the late game, and that seems to be their playground. They do that again more often than not against King Zone. Hard not to back. Well, going to be an amazing battle tomorrow. But to hear more from today's victors, let's send it down to Shocks and the King Zone support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. I'm here with Gorilla after King Zone Dragon X makes it to the finals. Gorilla, you have made your first international final now since 2015. What does it mean to you to finally be back in that final match? 2015년 후로 첫 결승 진, 진출하셨는데 지금 소감 한마디 부탁드립니다. 네 일단 이렇게 다시 좋은 기회를 얻게 돼서 되게 기쁘고요. 또그 이후로 약간 해외 대 이제 결승전까지 갈수 없다라는 그런 징크스도 있었지만 이렇게 깨게 돼서 되게 기쁜 것 같아요. 
So I'm really glad to be qualified for the finals in the international tournament. Actually, there was kind of superstition that we couldn't make it to the finals, so we break it, and I'm so really happy to be here. To be here. <sighs> Well, I do want to ask you about that curse specifically. There were a lot of questions about Kingzone and this squads and you and Prey's preparation and mindset going into those best of fives of international tournaments. Do you feel like you've overcome all those struggles now going into tomorrow? 사실 국제 대회에서 킹존 실력에 대해서 약간 많은 논란이 있었어요. 근데 이제 모든 그 문제들을 극복하신 것 같은가요? 네, 오늘 물론 이기긴 했지만 저희가 약간 부족한 면이 보였다고 생각을 하고요. 저희가 이제 내일 바로 경기라서 오늘 가서 피드백을 좀 빨리 하고 좋은 경기력으로 다시 찾아뵐 수 있을 것 같아요. Even if we have won today, actually I think we still have some mistakes. So with feedback today, afterwards when we get back, like, and we will try our best to show you some best performance tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There is not that much time. You did win over the flash rolls today. <laughs> they love every word you say. Um, I'll first let you talk to the, the, the people here. They're cheering so much. Is there anything you want to say to them? 지금 팬들분에게 한마디 부탁드립니다. 네, 일단 이렇게 다시 유럽의 열기를 느끼게 돼서 되게 기쁘고요. 네, 저희 꼭 내일까지 좋은 모습 보여드릴 테니까 많은 응원 부탁드리겠습니다. I love you. So he said, I'm so happy to feel this European energy back again. And we'll try our best to show you some good performance tomorrow. Fantastic. Now, I do have to ask you one final question. At the beginning of the group stage, you told me we're going to win. I talked to Uzi a couple of days ago. He said, I am ready to take that title. Gorilla, what can you say about your desire and your dream to win the title here in Paris tomorrow? 대회 시작할 때 이번에 우승한다고 말씀하셨는데 우지 선수도 이번 MSI 때 정말 우승을 하고 싶다고 인터뷰를 했어요. 지금 고릴라 선수의 정말 우승에 대한 욕망에 대해서 표현을 해주세요. 네, 뭐 일단 어, 지고 싶은 마음은 절대 없고요. 네, 저희도 잘 준비해서 우지 선수를 한번더 눌러주고 싶네요. 네. We don't think about losing at all. We really want to win, and I want to win against Uzi. Fantastic. I love it, guys. One more time for Gorilla and Kingzone. Thank you very much. Can't tell me that. Uh, back over to you guys. Have a nice one. Thank you very much, Sharks. The roar of the arena listening to Gorilla as he shoots or rather tries for another international title here. Again, the storylines are set. The bot lane of Prey and Gorilla versus the bot lane of Uzi and Ming. All of these guys wanting to take home a title, an international title, prove their worth on the world stage. And here, King Zone answered a lot of questions against the Flash Wolves squad with a 3-1 victory here in our second semifinal. And for me, it was really the effective depth of champion pool that Kingzone were able to carry out. People say that they can carry from every single position, but it's their ability that Khan can play the carries and the tanks. This is probably his best game, and he was on the Cho'Gath. It's the fact that BDD was able to absorb so many Aurelia bans and then just pulls out his signature Talia and has pressure exerted all across the map. I do think, though, even though it was a tank pick, it was used in a different fashion. So often you see a person put on a tank so they can ignore it and so he can be there for team fighting. Where this was specifically a Cho'Gath to create lane pressure and give them that advantage on the map. Because I feel like games one, three, and four weren't necessarily won by team fighting. It was won because they could generate pressure in a side lane and use that to create advantages on the rest of the map. It's going to be interesting to watch the two teams kind of go up against each other then tomorrow because if we look at RNG as being the superior team fighting team and Kingzone perhaps playing the map in that pressure game better, I, I wonder how those two styles will interact. Yeah, that's actually one thing that concerns me about Kingzone. I, I think today Flash Rules ended up in at least game three and game four making way too many mistakes on their own, kind of giving big advantages over to Kingzone. Mujin is a great example from this game. <laughs> it's like doing everything wrong level one he can possibly do. I don't think RNG will do the same. Well, and let's talk about that then, because at the top of the day, again, you guys laid out kind of the three things that Flash Wolves did so well to get so many of those victories in the group stage. And one of those things was intelligent level ones. And then in game four of this series, Kingzone says, uh-uh, we're going to turn the level one back around on you. 
with the invade. And the thing is, is that RNG also don't do level one plays. Like, I don't want to speculate too much, but watching this iteration of Flash Wolves, there were so many times that they gave away priority lanes, that they had scaling compositions, that they were playing for a 5v5. I can't quite think who that reminds me of. It's RNG from yesterday. So while I, I, I understand that we don't expect RNG to play or, or make the individual mistakes that key members of Flash Wolves did today, stylistically, I actually think Flash Wolves looked a lot like what RNG attempted yesterday. So if that's how it's going to go, Kingzone just roll over that. Right, that said, of course, I do want to work through kind of some of the key moments within this game. The first of which, again, is actually a replay in favor of the Flash Wolves coming at 16 minutes, 2-1 in the top. Their real big opportunity to perhaps turn this around, they find a sweet skirmish. Yeah, this was them just trying hard to defend the turret. The Black Shield does come in for prey, and that was a difficulty the entire game, but this time they actually get the flank TP. This is the one time they were able to stop the pressure from Kingzone. I am shocked that they're able to win this fight. Look at Betty. Yeah. He's completely locked out, and it is simply a hero Maple. play Ooh. from Maple. Four man time. That's yeah. insane. But that's also the difference when Maple plays someone like Galio and Talia versus his Yasuo performance, which, uh, again, I said at the very beginning, I didn't know if Maple was going to be able to match the carry or the dual threat potential that BDD brings. Maple went back to his supportive style, is still putting up huge plays like that, but I think that that was really the, the key difference here. It was a game of inches, and it wasn't able to grab that last one. So I'm so sad about a game three with a Yasuo. I think it could have worked, but again, the things that ended up backfiring on him playing too aggressive when they shouldn't, so he's back on uh, the Galio here, which actually is not even that great a pick when enemy already picked Talia. But yep. they were just like, we have the Zyra Khan, we should pick a Galio, and we will just try and snowball from the early game. And then obviously they got put behind. So this was literally the last chance for them. Uh, right, yeah, that was their best attempt to climb out of the hole that they had found themselves in. I do want to roll through the final moments of this game as Kingzone found themselves with 3-1 victory over Flash Wolves to challenge RNG tomorrow in our MSI final. Yeah, they'd already taken the Baron buff. You thought the game was actually going to end about three minutes prior, but just look at how massive Khan is on this Cho'Gath. They dumped so much initiation into him, and he loses about 10% of his health. <laughs> I mean, this is a oh fight where Vladimir actually gets the solo kill on Prey. He dives through the entire team and gets it. And by the way, the rest of the fight actually isn't that close. Khan finishes him off. The rest of King Zone is still pretty strong. The Trundle is also a monster in these fights, and they just clean it up. And even Little Betty plays his heart out, trying to outplay here, but it was, what, an 11k gold difference at this point in the game, using his flash, and they simply just don't have the gold or the items to make a difference. And that's why you also got to feel bad for Betty specifically, because you highlighted there how he actually played extremely well in this series. And he was like on the Kai'Sa, they tried to get him fed in almost every single game. And then the last one here, he never got to really play League of Legends. When is the last time you saw a Cho'Gath out damaging Ezreal? I'm gonna say right now. Ever? I would say, yeah, right Does that now. that ever happened in a pro game? That's a good question. We'll get some people on it, perhaps. But I do want to put a capper on this series so that we can kind of look forward and tease tomorrow's as well. But Flash Wolves, again, it was hit by the casters. The idea that this is a team that went one in five in groups in Worlds 2017, yep. lost one of their star players, replaced with a couple rookies, bringing into the roster. They come into this tournament. Everyone's projecting them fifth place at best behind all of these other big regions and they smash through the groups opening up in a six so yes they stumble a little bit but they still show up here and push the korean team to a degree that we don't see many do throughout history yeah and i, I think that's a really great story coming from a region we don't normally look a lot at but i think the big change was when casa left the team they had to find some something else to play around mabel was not playing at his highest level last year so they looked towards the bottom lane betty was a player who mechanically was very gifted from the start, but we had a lot of criticism for his positioning, his decision making, if we go back a year. That has clearly gotten a lot better for him. So they have this lane. They can actually play around in the bot lane yep. with two very, very strong players. And then you combine it with Mabel stepping up and of course Hanabi being quite an upgrade over Good old MMD. <laughs> yeah, I think Hanabi had a huge tournament as a rookie, pretty much a breakout for him on the international stage. And Flash Wolves refreshed that confidence that you can potentially have in them because I think they lost a little bit, failing to make it up two Worlds group stages in a row, highlighted with last year. It's back though. Betty stepped up his game. They found an apt replacement for MMD. They've moved on from Stake, no longer being their head coach, and they're set up for the future. But you guys are saying every name but the super important one, and it's Sword Art. That's what He's all right there. there. Sword yeah, Sword Sword yeah, that's the there. consistent member. But the fact that they uh, that this was in a meta, which, which was about the caster support, the melee support, like Sword Art can do it, do it all. Playing through the bottom lane, setting up Betty, the amount of engages he had, the disengages, the 
saves. Like, mm -hmm. Sword Art completely outclassed almost every single support in this tournament, maybe save for me. I mean, I think we can all agree that Sword Art is world class and he's fantastic, but he was there last year when his team tanked completely. So <laughs> I'm not saying that Sword Art got better and that's why Flash Wolves is better. I'm saying some of the changes that happened to how the team plays combined with how good Sword Art is. That is why Flash was so good. Right, let's let's put it in this perspective. As opposed to looking at it is where we are right now. Let's look at it for Worlds 2018. Again, the idea that this roster, just halfway through the season, with these young people that they've decided to put resources into and cultivate as young talent. I mean, the growth potential here, and maybe what they could do if they find themselves in another best of five, hey, say, come Worlds 2018, I mean, the hopes are high. The trajectory's there. The trajectory is there, but I also have to be hesitant to say a team that does great in group stage and then loses the first best of five doesn't mean it's like, well, as soon as they get three more months experience, they're right. world champions, Absolutely. Ash. Like, they, they will probably be a threat to make it out of groups, but beyond that, I think the letdown at the second half of groups and here not being able to keep up with any of the pressure Kingzone has means they're still kind of who we thought they were. Well, there's a lot of things for them at least to build upon. If they can go back and actually scrim the top LPL and LCK teams, which I'm not sure if they can always at least get to the LCK guys, but probably LPL, they used to have good scrim relationships in the past. I'm saying they looked like RNG. Hey, maybe they learned everything from RNG. If they can actually do that for the entire summer split, because their own region will not challenge them. Their own region will not help them whatsoever. But they're one of the few teams in the world who can actually get to scrim other world-class teams doing a split, which is a big advantage. And they can also play Korean solo queue that's not the case for NA and EU. Well, saying goodbye to the Flash Wolves as they made this tournament incredibly interesting for us. When your limits are tested on the big stage, it's challenging to maintain composure and take control of the series. But one pro from King Zone really stood out, fight after fight. So that's why BDD has earned himself player of the series in this one. And I know we were going back and forth on this, but ultimately for me, I just feel like BDD had to take it. The fact that his Aurelia had to be respected. He was permaban for the rest of the series. He came up big on the carry pick. He then showed up on his signature to Leah and his presence was felt everywhere across the map. Yeah, really does play a pivotal role in that pressure game. And they actually, I think, unlock the Talia pick because he was so good on Aurelia. I think Kingzone in general pulled out a couple of their trump cards here when they had to that they didn't show in the group stage. The fact that they're still willing to pick Jace, the fact that they can still counter pick the top lane, and the fact that they have this Aurelia with the Talia in their back pocket still keeps them as a formidable team. Both teams going through though, played the Aurelia. And so again, when Ooh. I'm looking at that, no, I'm just looking at that mid matchup tomorrow, yeah. the idea of Xiao Hu versus uh, BDD and, and you know what that's gonna do to the draft because for Flash Wolves, the answer was, okay, we ban it. That's the only way we can deal with it. That's not the only option for RNG. I mean, if you have a counter pick ready, you can maybe bait the enemy team picks it, you have it locked in. I'm not sure what is a counter pick to Aurelia mid right now because we simply haven't seen the matchup enough. But the two players who've shown it probably already know. And if there's no counter, then you're going to have to ban it away. I'm just a little bit concerned because BDD just seems on a completely different level than Xiaohu right now. He just doesn't have the same, I like the word that you use, pressure game. And BDD is so core to that and core to King Zone and how they move around the map. Whereas I feel like Xiaohu is a bit more plug and play. It's still really built around Uzi. Well, we'll be back to talk about it this, or rather that series in just a moment. To get more insight though from this semifinal, let's send it back to Shox and the victorious top laner. Thank you very much. I am here with Khan, the top lane of 4Kingzone after making it to the final. Khan, Flash Wolves was a team that you guys didn't manage to beat in the group stage of MSI. What was the biggest difference coming into this match? Group stage, Flash Wolves was 2-0. But what was the difference in this game? Well, the first time we won the game, we didn't have the problem with the game. The reason for this is just that we have a lot of mistakes in the past, so I think we won it. So I think we couldn't win during the group stage because we didn't make it to adjust our mistakes, you know. But here we did that. We we corrected everything. We could show our performance. That's why we won. Uh, speaking about mistakes and performance, very early on in the group stage, I spoke to you. You said you would give yourself a three out of ten after those first games. It was a very up and down group stage for you. Where do you think you're at right now? I was in the group stage at the beginning of the group stage. You said you would give yourself a three out of ten after those first games. 이번 경기 네 경기 다 포함한다면은 한 10점 만점에 한 7.5점 줄수 있는 것 같아요. 
Okay, so if you look at the four games of today, I would say it's 7.5. 7.5, well, that begs the question. Tomorrow you're going up against RNG. How good will you guys have to play to be able to beat them? Because they seem to be on an absolute roll. 내일 아렌즈와 결승을 하게 되는데 지금 정말 잘하고 있어요. 그럼 내일 한몇점 정도 실력 나와야지 이길 수 있을까요? 음, 뭐저 자신한테 만족스러운 점수는 7점 정도면 만족스러운 것 같고 결승 무대이니만큼 좋은 모습 보여드리기 위해서 10점짜리 경기력을 보여줄 수 있도록 노력하겠습니다. Actually, I'm satisfied about my performance when I reach a 7, but tomorrow I want to show a 10. Oh, a 10. Well, that should be scary for RNG. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kansamida Khan. Congratulations. Thanks. And back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Shox. A 7.5 today, hoping to give us a 10 tomorrow. What do you guys think? I want to know what his rubric is. <laughs> <laughs> three to seven and a half. There, he had a really great Cho'Gath game. I think that was yeah. definitely the standard. I ranked that around a nine. There's still that the Camille game right in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring that rubric down pretty far. All but right. and we, we did we did get to see that all important Jace pick showing that he's True. still willing to pull it out here on the international stage. And True. of course, as you mentioned, the Cho'Gath performance to close out the series quite nice. Now, earlier we asked you who your MVP of the entire tournament was. And here are a few tweets that caught our attention. First up, Rowan felt while Uzi is the obvious choice, Betty from the Flash Wolves made enough clutch plays this tournament to be at least considered an MVP candidate. I guess then the question is, is if you don't make the finals, can you take away the MVP? Because I do respect that Betty certainly stepped up, especially for the expectations of the rubric that we had for him. But He's still not in the fi finals. It's also the question about MVP. Is it the most valuable player on your team or the best player overall? People depend, uh, tend to look at it differently. I think Betty yeah. was very important for Flash Rules, but I think Sword Art and Mabel are right there next. To yeah, you it. asked both those questions. Zeus is the answer for both of them. Like, I understand that it's, it's worthy of recognizing Betty for playing great, yeah. but I don't think you talk to anyone who says... It's not. We'll talk to that guy. Right, well, guess what? He we're said gonna... he didn't even say it. He said he at least deserves to be in the conversation. <laughs> uh, that's that's fair. That's we had the conversation. Well, sure, we had the conversation. <laughs> All right. It. Well, next up, Joseph Kuba felt that Caps for sure delivered an incredible performance for Fnatic. Same response. If you don't make well, fun of okay, <laughs> understanding no, no, no. that, then no. let's maybe talk about the player. <laughs> I think here, if you actually, if you value this, okay, who was the most important for their team to do well? Thank you. Dimitrio. I think you can actually say Caps. Mm -hmm. Because this Fnatic team, especially in the group stages, they had almost nothing in the early game other than Caps and Broxa, mainly Caps. And mm -hmm. then Caps was like, I'm 5-0 now. I will give some gold to the rest of my team. And he would walk around and smack everyone in the head. But then you have I think he was so important. You literally then have the other MVP candidate that we've talked about, Uzi, who <laughs> gets thrown. Guys, like he throws let me the game get to there. Caps. So Caps <laughs> Please. I have a script. Yeah, Caps was, Caps was actually super good. He I was the super one thing. Good that could have actually propelled them over Uzi is to bring his isolated deaths way down. Yep. Because he had what? He had 11 going into the he knockout was number stage one. and then moved into number one because he died a lot. He wanted to be number one in everything and he managed to do that. It is still one of the main criticisms Action we've score. had throughout the tournament, right? Eliminating those individual mistakes with his growth as a young player looking to be a main carry for Fnatic. Finally, I can't read that top line, so something about Salty Sailors. I mentioned we received a flood of tweets. It's worth noting that a large majority of them were, no surprise, for the RNG ADC. Yeah. Say it with me. Good Uzi. job, large majority. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're I hate for. you guys nice. so much right now. <laughs> I thought talk for about, sure we're now Uzi. Uzi. Talk about why, Uzi. Why Uzi? I right? think it should What's be Uzi valuable. All right, no, but really. Highest damage percentage <laughs> in group stage history. Over six kills a game, double digit ahead of the next closest, mm. undefeated in the knockout stage, won his first title in the LPL, even though that's not important. I take it back. Stop talking about it. Wins every lane, <laughs> no matter what every he plays. Lane. Well, this makes me see, uh, feel like tomorrow, you know, is such a lopsided matchup. You heard the casters talk about it at the conclusion of this series that a lot of people might be looking at tomorrow's series as an RNG favorite series. Do you align with that opinion? Uh, not really. No. I, I'm expecting a huge clash of different styles because RNG can actually play up tempo. They didn't necessarily do it against Fnatic, but it's more about bottom lane focus versus mid top lane focus because Kingzone abandoned that bottom lane today and just let Prey and Gorilla absorb until they could get pressure. Whereas I still expect RNG to play some type of bot lane focus. They most likely will. And it's interesting because Kingzone 
managed to get some early leads today against Flash Wolves, but not because they were like overly forcing it. Like a lot of it was actually Flash Wolves also making some big mistakes, except for maybe the Jace game, but we had a lot of focus on getting him ahead. So RNG, if you look at their games against Fnatic, they fell behind in every single one of them. They did not try and win the early game super hard. I wonder if Kingston can do that and will do it, because if they get a goal lead, they're good enough to close out games and get Barons. If it's completely even, RNG will get to their team fights, and then I think it's in their favor. Is that not the scariest thing about RNG? I heard the piece of commentary throughout the cast that so many of the games throughout this tournament, once a lead was established, we very rarely saw the comebacks mounted. But RNG seems like one of those yeah. teams that you can never count out because at any moment they take the skirmish at a deficit, and yet they still win it. They're very good at playing from behind. It happened a lot domestically in the LPL. Again, RNG were one of two super teams that we had in the LPL, the other one being Invictus Gaming. And it was Invictus Gaming that would often play a very similar style to Kingzone, where they'd run away with the first 15 minutes. Not as pressure-based, more lane-based, but RNG had to go through Kingzone. They also had to go through Snake, another high-tempo team, as well as Team WE, who got massive leads, and then RNG just sat back and recognized that they could team fight better. So the gauntlet that they played to get here pretty much trained them perfectly for this type of style. And we've also seen the teams play each other twice now. The first game, Kingzone runs away with it. The second game, however, Kingzone gets the early advantage and then lose effectively every single skirmish and team fight. Uzi's on that Kaiser dancing around. They never lock him down with Camille, Galio, like insane combination. And Uzi ends up carrying that game. So we've seen both examples. One where Kingsong gets ahead and, and wins, mm -hmm. and the other one where they get ahead, but then lose fights to RNG. We've seen them both. Yeah, by tomorrow during predictions, I'm going to be able to tell you why definitively one team will definitely win Dash. Right, I can't wait for But that. right now, I am just excited to watch it because even the first pick and ban phase, I think is extremely hard to predict. Mm. We saw today King Zone banning out three junglers while leaving Trundle and Olaf up when at the start of the tournament, those were the two junglers you would ban, if any. And th I just feel like there's so much flexibility between both teams. I think the champion pool is completely shared. Amongst both teams. All right, so well, the, the, stage, whatever. the stage is set with their win today. Kings don't have earned their spot in the final where they will face Uzi and RNG. It all comes down to one final best of five to crown the champion of MSI. So now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for the conclusion of MSI 2018.